okay so in this video we are going to look at uh, the idea of uh, primitive root okay uh, for a prime integer um, so this is a precursor to know or use the diffie hellman key exchange algorithm so uh, just an example or to illustrate uh, or get an idea of what primitive root is so let's take a prime integer say 7 so uh, a primitive root for 7 could be anything uh, or possibly could be from um, 1 to uh, 6. Uh, so in general it is something from 1 to uh, less than uh, n or 1 to n minus 1 if n is your prime integer of interest. So in this case for n equals 7 the possible candidates for primitive root are 1 to 6. Okay, so we want to check, uh, so given, let's say, uh, can you verify, say, whether 3 is a primitive root of 7, a brute force way of checking that would be to compute 3 raised to 1, 3 raised to 2, 3 raised to 3, 3 raised to 4, and so on, to 3 raised to 6, everything in the class modulo 7, because we're interested in finding uh, whether 3 is a primitive root of 7. So we could compute... 3 raised to 1 mod 7 which is ultimately 3 3 square mod 7 we could use the um, idea behind the modular exponentiation so 3 square is 3 to the 1 times 3 to the 1 which is 3 times 3 just 9 mod 7 is 2 3 cube mod 7 is 3 square times uh, 3 and we know 3 square is 2 2 times 3 is 6 mod 7 is the same value then 3 to the 4 is 3 cube times 3 or 3 square times 3 square either way. Uh, so it's going to be um, 6 times 3 if it is 3 cube times 3. 6 times 3 is 18 mod 7 is 4. So you go through like this. So for the values 3 to the 1, 3 to the 2, up to 3 to the 6, we get like 3, 2, 6, uh, 4, 5, 1. So these are some permutations of uh, elements in the range 1 to 6 okay so uh, um, so from 3 to 1 3 to up to 3 to the 6 uh, we get the result in some like these are unique values so no value appears more than once so in general if you have g as a candidate for primitive root g to the 1 g to the 2 g3 up to g to n minus 1 everything in the class modulo n should be n minus 1 distinct integers like this so then we can say that g is a primitive root for n okay so this is a brute force way of testing whether the given integer is a primitive root or not for our, our prime integer okay so let's uh, now see a more uh, efficient way of uh, finding primitive roots so let's take up an um, uh, integer let's say n again uh, it could be 761 so let's say n is um, <clears throat> so our n is 761 so n minus 1 is going to be 760 so we need to find uh, the prim, uh, prime um, factor for if you want to find a prime factor for n, n which is 761 uh, sorry primitive root for n which is 761 we need to know n minus 1 is 760 so if you want to find a primitive root for n equals 761 so first find n minus 1 which is 760 find the prime factors of n minus 1 so what is the prime factor so if you take the seven so any integer okay uh, could be written as a product of the uh, prime factors so we're going to see how to do it for 760 so 760 so the first prime factor uh, one of course is is a prime factor for everything but we don't count typically one as part of uh, our prime factors so we'll start with 2. We'll see whether 760 is reusable by 2 and it is. So that's 380. 
and then we'll continue with 2 until something is not divisible by 2 so this is 95 so 95 of course is not divisible by 2 so what we'll do is uh, how many twos you are considered so far 3 right so you can write 760 as 2 cube times this 95 essentially right so uh, now we are going to break 95 further with something that is that can divide 95 2 of course cannot divide 95 3 no 4 of course no so 5 yes so we can write 95 as 5 times 19 and 19 itself is a prime integer so we don't need to decompose further so the prime factors here are uh, 2 5 and 19 so that's how we find the prime factors okay so let's now go through an example to uh, with a smaller integer uh, that is the nature of integers I'll give in exams also so let's take up again another uh, prime integer let's say n is 13 and uh, <coughs> so n minus 1 is 12 so the prime factors of 12 are so 12 can be written as what 2 square times 3 so now um, the possible candidates for primitive root or anything from we're going to test for um, 13 right primitive we want to find the primitive roots of 13 for 13 are uh, like 2 3 4 up to 12 so what we'll do is we'll pick up each of these possible candidates and go through some tests like this so we'll call these candidates as some um, g so each one will be g and the primitive the prime factors have something like q so the prime factors are represented as q and the candidates for primitive root as g so we'll do something like this so pick up a g let's say it is 2 and do this test g rise to n minus 1 divided by q so the whole thing this n minus 1 divided by q the whole thing is an exponent so g is 2 here so g rise to n is 13 so n minus 1 is 12 divided by 2 which is 6 so 2 rise to 6 mod 13 uh, so you could use your calculator uh, or you, like if you work with typically larger integers uh, you have to use a model exponentiation because it will blow up so 2 to the 6 is 64 mod 13 is 12 okay and 12 is not equal to 1 so now let's try g rise to n minus 1 divided by q mod n g is 2 rise to n minus 1 is 12 divided by 3 so 12 divided by 3 is 4 so 2 rise to 4 mod 13 which is 8 2 rise to 4 is not 8 sorry 2 rise to 4 is 16 16 mod 13 is 3 which is not equal to 1 so when you do this test of g rise to n minus 1 divided by q mod n for each value of q what, what why i used q's 2 and 3 because those are my prime factors and i did not get them to be equal to 1 then we can say this g equals 2 is a primitive root of 13 and if you want to check you can go through the same check that we did for whether 3 is a primitive root of 7 we can rise exponents of 2 all the way from 1 to 12 and do mod 13 and see if you get everything all distinct integers from 1 to 12 so now let's try for g equals 5 okay so uh, so g is 5 rise to 12 divided by q is 2 so 5 rise to 6 mod 13 so 5 rise to 6 we have to use uh, a calculator if you if it blows up I, I would strongly recommend to use um, the mod or exponentiation algorithm so 5 rise to 6 mod 13 mod 13 is you can divide by 13 so take away that 
quotient part and multiply by 3, you get, uh, sorry, 13, you get 12. So that is not equal to 1. Now, and 5 rise to 12, uh, which is n minus 1, divided by 3, which is 4. So 5 rise to 4 is um, 625 mod 13 is this minus 48 times 13 you get 1 so you should not get 1 once when you do this g rise to n minus 1 divided by q mod n and if you get it to be equal to 1 we could stop right there and say that g equals in this case 5 it's not a primitive root of 13 okay so let's do one more example let's say i've given you a prime integer to be 23 and you want to find uh, one of its primitive uh, roots so again the candidates could be anything from 2 to 22 so we'll go through the prime factor approach so prime factors of 20 n minus 1 in this case is 22 or 2 and 11 so uh, the candidates again are g equals 2 to 22 so we'll try g equals 3 so 3 rise to n minus 1 in this case is like 22 and q's are 2 and 3 so let's try as 2 and 11 so let's try with 2 22 divided by 2 is 11 3 rise to 11 more 23 um, so 3 rise to 11 more 23 is going to be 1. So once you get it's 1, you can right away stop there and say g equals 3 is not a primitive root of 23. You don't need to evaluate with q equals 11. Okay, because that property of g raised to n minus 1 divided by q mod n should not be equal to 1, should be observed for all values of q, all the prime factors. Okay, so if you get this to be equal to 1 for even one prime factor, you can stop right there and say this is not a primitive root, that g is not a primitive root. So let's try g equals 4. So g equals 4 and it is going to be 4 rise to n minus 1 is 22 divided by 2 is 4 rise to 11 mod 23. Again 4 rise to 11 is going to be 4 rise to 11 divided by 23 is something this 182361 times 23 that is also 1 so we can stop right there and say g equals 4 is not a primitive root of 13 so now let's try g equals 5 so 5 rise to uh, n minus 1 is 22 divided by q so 5 rise to 11 mod 23 5 rise to 11 is going to be divided by 23 minus 212961 times 23 that's going to be 22 so that's not equal to 1 uh, so now when q equals 11 it's going to be 5 rise to 22 divided by 11 mod 23 that is 5 square mod 23 which is 25 mod 23 which is 2 that's not equal to 1 so in both cases because these are the two prim prime factors q equals 2 and 11 so in both cases we observe that g rise to n minus 1 divided by q mod n is not equal to 1. So we can say g equals 5 is a primitive root of 23. So again, you could try with different values of g. So it's more easy to work with smaller numbers, but uh, your candidates for g are from 2 to 22. So you could pick any one from the set and uh, keep trying, or not just any one, until you find a primitive root, you can keep trying. Okay, so we'll stop with this for primitive root.